COT positioning reports can give you an edge. They can make you a better, more profitable trader. Today, we're gonna to be going through three specific examples of profitable trading systems that you can trade all of which incorporate COT positioning data. We've got a lot to get through today, so let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Dave Whitcomb from Peak Trading Research in Geneva, Switzerland. My goal is to help you trade more profitably with commodity market insights and real systematic trading systems. It's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Some examples of real systematic trading systems all of which use COT data. So this is the third video in a series of three. In our first video, we talked about COT Report 101. What is the report? Why does it matter? In the second video, we talked about commodity market participants, especially hedge funds. Hedge funds are the price driver in commodity markets. And now in this third video, we're gonna tie everything together. This is the fun stuff. We're gonna be talking about how you can build real systematic trading strategies based on COT data, based on what we talked about in the first two videos. So today we're gonna to be going through specific trading systems for three different agriculture commodity markets, oats, live cattle, and Kansas wheat. But all three of these trading systems use a pretty similar big picture idea, and that is sometimes hedge funds as the price driver in commodity markets get too long, and sometimes hedge funds get too short. We're gonna be building systems that take advantage of either short squeezes or long liquidation events. Now, I'm gonna be going through these examples in TradeStation using TradeStation easy language, but if you're a discretionary trader, if you wanna do this in Excel or you wanna build it in Python, that's no problem. I'm using TradeStation so we can look at some basic profit statistics, but let's focus more on the logic of the systems and less on the specific code itself. Now for this first trading system, we're gonna be going through a very basic example of what we call COT threshold trading. So is the hedge fund net position in a certain commodity, we'll use oats as an example, is that net position above a certain threshold? So all of the hedge funds that we talked about in our second video, Systematica, Millennium, DRW, Square Point, are all these hedge funds long and there's simply no one else to buy the market, right? Prices should naturally settle back because everyone's already bought. This is the oats agriculture market on daily price bars. We can add in the non-commercial net position for oats as well. And what you'll see is the positive correlation between hedge fund flows and prices. When hedge funds buy, when they're adding to long positions and getting net long, prices generally rise. Now, we can build a very simple trading system using just two lines of logic that says whenever that non-commercial net position is above 2,200 contracts, so when hedge funds are getting long, then we want to sell short oat futures the next bar at market. So the next time the market opens, we want to sell oat futures using this system. Now, when 21 days have gone by, when our bar sense entry is greater than 21, so about a month, when 21 trading sessions have gone by, we want to buy to cover, so we want to close that short position next bar at market. So. This system is constantly saying, are hedge funds above that threshold? If they are, I wanna sell short, and then I wanna get out of that short position one month later. Now, if we turn on this system on our OATS chart, we can get a sense for how the strategy works. We can see that this strategy is constantly trying to sell short whenever we get above that 2200 contract threshold. So. Good example here, back in early 2019, hedge funds added to a net long, longer than 2,200 contracts, and the system went short for 21 trading sessions. Now, if we look at the strategy performance report, that's a nice upward sloping equity curve, meaning this strategy has generally made positive cumulative profits over time. We can see that it's made money in 12 out of 18 trades over the past few years. This shows promise 
using a very simple approach that we could trade the oats market using that non-commercial position as a threshold to establish shorts. Now for our second trading system example, we're gonna be talking about big hedge fund flows. Now, sometimes weekly COT reports show that hedge funds bought or sold a large amount of contracts, and often that can send important forward-looking price signals about that market. So let's look at an example for the live cattle market. If we look at data from the August 24th, 2021 COT report, we can see that non-commercial hedge fund traders added 14,760 contracts of new longs during the week. That's the third largest inflow week on record. Now, if we look at the other 20 largest inflow weeks, like that August 24th week, we can see that prices generally set back in the one month and three month periods that follow. Another way to say this is, hedge funds tend to be long and wrong when they buy a whole lot of futures. They buy live cattle futures, prices go up, the market runs out of buyers, prices naturally settle back in the one and three month periods after. Now, since we sent this note to clients on August 28th, if we look at what live cattle futures have done, they have settled back, right? So already we're seeing a little bit of that, that when hedge funds buy, they get overextended, prices tend to settle back in the weeks that follow those big flow events. Now for our third and final trading system, we're gonna be using the same threshold idea that we talked about in the first trading system, but also incorporating a price signal to trade. Now threshold trading is great, it's easy to understand, but it has one big shortcoming, and that is hedge funds can stay extended long or extended short for long periods of time. It often takes some catalyst, some fundamental or non-fundamental trigger that moves prices against hedge fund positioning and drives all these funds to liquidate their big positions at the same time. We're gonna build a trading system that uses this price trigger idea to trade profitably. Now let's take the same code that we used in the first example for the oats market and let's apply it to Kansas wheat. So in this case, if the non-commercial net position is above a 2000 contract threshold, sell short Kansas wheat next bar at market. So get into a short position. Now we can see if we look at the strategy performance report, this is a decent trading approach, right? We've got a nice upward sloping equity curve. This approach would have made $30,500 over the last 10 years using this approach. Now, we can improve this a little bit. We can use, instead of just get in, once you've exceeded that threshold, we can also layer on a price signal. So in this case, we're gonna say sell short next bar lowest low of the last two days on a stop. So whenever momentum starts turning lower, this system is then gonna sell instead of just selling above that threshold. Now, if we look at our strategy performance report, it's gotten a little bit better. Our PL's improved, our profit line looks a little bit more smooth. So for Kansas wheat, instead of just selling above a threshold, we're now saying we have to be above that threshold and price has to start turning lower. We have to sell at a lower low on a stop. And of course, we can see how this system works, right? Prices start turning lower, then the system gets short. Prices start turning lower, then the system gets short. So it's being more patient versus just selling above that threshold. Now in both the oats system in the first example and the Kansas wheat system in the third example, we talked about going short when hedge funds are extended long. Now there are some commodity markets where it makes sense to go short when funds are long, but also long when hedge funds are extended short. For example, we have a market here that trades both ways. It goes long when funds are short, short when funds are long, and this is a nice upward sloping equity curve. This is a really good trading system. If you'd like to have the logic behind this system, the TradeStation workspace, the function, the indicator, everything you'd need to trade this, shoot me a line at insight at peaktradingresearch.com and I'll send it over to you. So there are of course other ways that you can trade COT data. You could add more price filters to some of these systems or a seasonal filter or volume or momentum. 
You could also incorporate positions from some of the other market participants we talked about in our second video, other reportables, non-reportables, commercial positioning. There's a lot more you can do here. If you're looking for more ideas on how to build trading systems around COT data, there's the Commitment of Traders Bible by Stephen Brees. Also, Trade Stocks and Commodities with the Insiders by Larry Williams. I hope you found today's video on COT trading valuable. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe button below for more great stuff from Peak Trading Research. Thanks for your time. We'll see you soon.